Hallelujah. This morning I want to say greetings to everyone that is on the line. Everyone that is in the service. God is able to do for us the things that he says in his words that he will do. This morning I want to speak to you from the book of Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 33 verses 1 through verse 7. My topic this morning is the duties of the watchman. The duties of the watchman. Now the watchman can be chosen by the people according to this chapter or he could be chosen by God. In this case, the watchman is chosen by God. And we thank God that there are watchmen who God place to watch and to see where the danger is coming from and to warn the people. But let me read the scripture and you can join with me uh, with your Bibles or your devices, whatever you have <clears throat> uh, that has the word that you can read. Verse 1 says, Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their course, and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword cometh upon the land, he blow the trumpet, and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and take not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, and took not warning, the blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman sees the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's end. Verse 7 and last. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the words at my mouth and warn them for me. Hallelujah. So God says to Jeremiah, if the people of the land chose this watchman and he sees danger and did not warn the people, whatever happened, their blood is required at his hand, meaning he is 
responsible for what happened to the people because he did not warn them. He did not give them heads up on what is about to happen. But if he warns the people and the people didn't take heed to his words and the sword come upon them and take them away, then their blood will be upon their own head and the watchman is not at all responsible. Now, God says to Jeremiah, I mean to Ezekiel, I, God, chose you to be a watchman for the house of Israel. And you must hear the word at my mouth. Listen to what I say. And your duty is to warn your people for me. Hallelujah. Sometimes we are afraid to announce the things that God says to us. Because we believe that people are not going to believe us. People are not going to take heed, amen, to what we say. But it is not our duty to think whether or not the people are going to hear and respond accordingly or they are not going to hear and they are going to go about their business doing the things that they are warned about. Our duty is to blow the trumpet. Blowing the trumpet here is to announce what is the danger. To announce what is pending. To announce what we see or what we hear. Hallelujah. See, when God says, you must hear the word at my mouth, it is not only what the watchman hear that he should warn the people about. It's also what the watchman sees. Now, there are danger that is coming. And the watchman from his position, where he is placed, he is not on the same level with everybody. Back in the old days, every city, every town has a tower. The tower is the highest point in the city. You can view the whole city roundabout from the top of the tower. And when they built the city, most time the tower is built close to the gate. At an approaching point where someone would approach the city. And if good is coming to the city, the watchman in the tower is the first one to see what's coming. If there is a sound of violence or war and it is a distant off because of where the watchman is, he is the first one to hear the sound of what is happening in the distant. And therefore, he is the one that would call to someone in the city and said, I heard a sound or I see something. It looks good or it doesn't look good. Amen. And one would prepare themselves for what is coming whether it's good or it's evil. The watchman is placed in a strategic position because of the job that he is given to do. God chose this prophet to be a watchman for the people in his day. 
in his time. Hallelujah. But in today's generation, in this time and season that we live upon the earth, God also have watchmen. God doesn't come and talk to everybody and reveal things to everybody in the same way. When the watchman speak, he speaks for God. When the prophet speak, he speaks for God. So if someone should say, I'm not listening to what the prophet says or to what the watchman says, God would have to come and tell me himself. Well, God just talked to you himself because the watchman is the voice of God. The watchman is the eyes of God. The watchman is the one who says what God would say. Notice the chapter started at verse 1 with the word again. Again mean that the thing has occurred already and it is now occurring again. Meaning something has happened already. Meaning God spoke to this man already. And here God is speaking to him again. Whether it's a second time, a third time, a fourth time, uh, whatever number of time this again may be, it shows that God was always speaking to this man. But this time he's speaking to him about the sword that is coming against the city. And so as God speak to him, God let him know what the consequences will be, whether he wants the city or whether he doesn't want the city. In either situation, there is going to be consequences. In either situation, there is going to be results. If he wants the city and they take heed, ah, the result will be good. If he wants the city and they didn't take heed, the result is going to be bad or the consequences is going to be bad. The watchman, however, is in a position also where there can be consequences on his life. Because if he doesn't warn the, warn the people, the result will not be the same as if he warns the people. See, if he warns the people, then he is free from what happens or what comes next. If he doesn't warn the people, then what comes next would come on him to. It would not be just the city that is in danger, but his life also would be in danger. Sometimes God tells you to do something, and it is not a matter of questioning God because you don't understand what he says to do. He is God, and he knows more than everyone. Hallelujah. You know, this morning I listened to that testimony and I see the message in that testimony. I listened, amen, to what was said and I saw the message in what was said. What if Sister Henry had not prayed when God revealed the plot of the enemy. See, she probably didn't heard something, but she discerned something. She saw something. She didn't know exactly how it was going down. But because she saw something, Amen. As she heard something in her spirit, then she sprang into action. Hallelujah. This is an example 
of exactly how the watchman should behave. See, God select who he wants to be a watchman. The scripture tells us that the people can select a watchman. That's how it started out. He says, if the, man, if, the, if the people of the city choose the watchman, then the watchman have the same responsibility as if when God chose the watchman. But I rather God choosing the watchman. Because when God chose the watchman, God Almighty will communicate with the watchman that he chose. God will speak to that watchman who he chose. And when God speak to the watchman, see, God cannot miss. When the watchman that the people chose can miss something, the watchman who God chose, God shows exactly what is about to take place. Uh, you don't have to think whether it's my thought, whether it's my mind, whether God really speak or not. Now, the prophet was familiar with the voice of God. And like I said, the first word that comes in the chapter in verse 1, it's the word again. So God has been speaking to him times and times again. It did not say how many times before that God spoke to him, but again means God spoke to him before, and now God is speaking one more time. Hallelujah. God is making him know that even though I spoke to you before, him and I'm speaking again, God is saying, if you don't sound the alarm, if you don't blow the trumpet, if you don't let the people know what is about to happen, then these are the things that will happen to you. If you don't warn the people, then their blood will require to your hand. But if you warn the people, amen, you deliver your soul. Today, so many of us have blood on our hand because we did not do what God tell us to do. We did not say what God tell us to say. We did not warn the people. Hallelujah. I thank God for mercies because if it was not for the mercies of God, many of us would drop dead. Because of our action when God speak to us. Hallelujah. When God speak to us, we must know when God speak to us. Amen. Sometimes God speak to us in different ways. And we got to make sure that it is God who is speaking. Hallelujah. We got to make sure that this is God. And what is being said to me is God. Because there are many who goes around and say God says when God didn't say. Uh, many goes around and say, I hear this. They didn't hear from God. So we know that the enemy tried to confuse his people sometime. But we must endeavor to know the voice of God and to know when God's speaking because we have a duty to perform we are God's watchmen. And the lives of individuals, men and women, are in our hands. Hallelujah. It may seem simple, but this is what God says. God says if the watchman does not sound the alarm, if he or she does not blow the trumpet, if they do not warn the people, then the blood of the people is required at their hand. Ah, you would think it's only when a man commit murder that somebody's blood is on their hand. Well, I beg to differ according to the scripture. 
when we do not do what God tell us to do and the consequences amen come down on someone or on a nation or a family amen and it costs debt it costs destruction then we who do not warn the people we are the one who is responsible i keep thinking about what is happening i keep thinking about the things that is happening on new year's night i came to church and i have a message prepared i sat in my office and as i sat there going over the message like i like to do many times i will write and when i get to the office i like to go i like to pray and you know go over the message and right there the lord changed the message the lord impressed on me to speak and change and i didn't know why but I turn to another scripture and I begin to uh, read the scripture and I spoke about change. At the end of the message, I declare that this year is a year of change. I even said things are going to happen this year that we never dream about, things we never thought about i did not know the magnitude of the things that would happen i knew that we had a 21 day fast and beginning january we started fasting for 21 days but during the fasting the lord impressed on me to extend this fasting and of prayer meeting for three months pray three times a day and different people would be in charge of each week uh, we have a members meeting plan and I remember I come to that members meeting and I said listen the Lord impress on me not to make any plans we are gonna pray for these three months and after the three months then when we have a meeting at the end of the three months, we will make the plans for the rest of the year. And I said, I would want everybody, I'm asking everybody to be involved. I didn't know what was in the works. I didn't understand that for a church, we supposed to have plans what we are going to do for the year. But nevertheless, I obey what was in my spirit. And my God, even today, every time I stop and think, I said to myself, even this morning, I said, I wonder what would happen if we weren't praying for these three months. And we end our prayer in March. And in March was the time when this virus gets so bad that the whole country have to shut down and this thing is a worldwide thing that will go down permanently in history everything has changed because of what happened no i would feel real bad in my spirit if i did not obey the word of god that came to me and said preach about change and declare before the congregation that this year is a year of change though i didn't know what was coming but i thank god that today i can look back and see amen that what the spirit of god had placed in my heart to do was right hallelujah sometimes we want to try to understand what god is doing we try to understand how is he going to do it 
But God is God, and when God says something, when He put a word in our spirit, when He gives us an inspiration, we must act immediately upon it. If we don't, then there will be consequences. If we don't, then whatever happens after, amen, it will be blamed on us. And listen, that blame is not coming from man. God says, I, God, will require it at your hand. So if man even want to talk good and say, well, you didn't do this or you didn't do that, in the eyes of God, it's not so. God says, because you did not do what I said you should do, because I did, you did not warn him and like I said you should, whatever happened because you didn't warn I require it at your hand. Today it is something that we should take thought of. When God speaks to us, let us not try to understand what it meant. Rather than speaking what he says we should speak. Hallelujah. I think about the prophet came in the city and he came to the king hallelujah he came to the king Elijah come in the city and there were no word about Elijah and his prophecies and his lifestyle uh, he just came in the city and we read in the scripture uh, the inhabitants that he came from and he came to the king and he says to the king, uh, it shall not rain at my word for these three and a half years. Hallelujah. And he didn't know that those very words that he speak was going to affect his life one way or the other but after I speak those words and turn away God direct him and said go to this place and abide by the brook and he obeyed God and he did everything that God says suddenly the rain stopped falling and all in a sudden everything dried up the brooks dried up the only brook Amen. That was running was the one where God sent him. Hallelujah. And after a while, even that dried up too. But God have other provision for him. You see, because he's living by the word of God. He is doing exactly the things that God tell him to do. He's not worrying about how it's going to happen. How the people are going to manage. He's just doing what God says. But many times we fail to do what God says. Yes, there were consequences because the king wanted to kill him. The king searched the whole country and even outside of the country to find him because the king now want to kill him. Sometimes those are the things that we worry about. Why we will not speak what God says that we should speak. Or what God put in our spirit. Elijah didn't worry about what the consequences were going to be when he spoke what God says. It is full time we take a grip of ourselves. And understand that God is God. And he knows more than we know. And we should speak exactly what he says don't try to print it up don't try to make it so nice don't try to uh make it sound acceptable him and god already tell us what we should say and we should say it today my words to each and everyone who is listening god chose us and he used us in different capacity whatever god place in our hearts to do however simple it might sound whether we think 
we heard his voice or he just dropped it in our spirit listen we can pray and confirm that with God hallelujah because when we don't do what he says we are supposed to do because of what we think then there is great consequences we are God's watchmen and in whatever way God wants to use us, He uses us. God is bigger than our thoughts. God is bigger than our ideas. And it doesn't have to make sense to us. Amen. In order to do what God says we are to do. So my brethren, today, we have a duty to perform. Because we are God's watchmen. Hallelujah. We have a duty to perform. Because there are some people who if we don't say what God says, they are going to die. They are going to perish in their sins. God says to this prophet, if you don't warn the people, they will die in their iniquity. But listen. Their blood will require at your hand. Listen to me. I don't want to stand before God. And God shows me a whole bunch of people whose blood is required at my hand. No, I could not stand that. So therefore, whatever God put in my spirit to do or to speak, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Some people might like it. Some people might not like it. Some people might grumble. Some might accept it. But that's not for me to think about. What I'm supposed to be thinking about, amen, is what God says and do exactly what he says. And I'm asking each and every one of you to do the same. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. And allow God Almighty to lead us. Hallelujah. The Bible says we should not lean to our own understanding. But in all our ways, we should acknowledge Him and He will direct our path. God doesn't give us wrong instruction. God doesn't lead us in the wrong path. He leads us in the part that he prepared for us. And sometimes it don't seem like it is nice to walk in that part. But nevertheless, it is going to be all right because God is the one who is leading. My brethren, today, let us try to be on that part that God is leading us so we can do the things that he tells us to do and please him as we live our life from day to day today. God bless you as you listen to this message and I thank God for the privilege of speaking to you. I want to pray today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bow before you. I give you honor. I give you praise. I give you thanks. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you chose us to be your watchman. Oh, you chose us to be the voice that speak Oh God, to the people on your behalf. Lord Jesus, I pray that our hearts will be willing, Lord, to listen to what you have to say to us. Oh God Almighty, so that we can carry a direct message. Oh God Almighty, that comes from you. You are our God. You are Lord of our life. You are the King, oh mighty Father. And your business, oh Lord God Almighty, is important. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, all that you send to speak to us, to reveal to us the things that is on your mind, Lord, the things that is in your heart, Lord. Jesus Christ, you said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will take what is yours and he will show it to us, Almighty Father. And so, Lord, I pray, God, that you will strengthen our hearts. Today, Lord, I lift up those who are listening, God, who do not know you as Lord and Savior. I'm praying for them today, God Almighty, that you, Lord, will touch their heart. As they listen to this word, Lord Jesus Christ, 
Oh God, it's another warning that comes to them, Lord Jesus Christ, that if they die in their iniquity, then Lord Jesus, it will be a dreadful day at the judgment. But God Almighty, if they take heed to this warning and turn from their sin, then God Almighty, you will give them salvation. Today I pray, God Almighty, that you will trouble their spirit, trouble their heart, Lord, and help them, Lord, to turn to you and to repent. Lord Jesus Christ, I give you honor, I give you praise, I give you thanks. I ask you for healing today for everyone that is sick, everyone that is afflicted now. Lord Jesus, I speak healing in your name, O oh God Almighty, that they may be healed in Jesus' name. And I say thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and thank you very much.